Hello again, I'm Mike Clemens with IdentiCard, and in this video I'd like to show you proper printing of IdentiCard Jetpack inserts, and also some issues that you could experience and how to correct them. Let's take a quick overview. IdentiCard inserts are available in three main sizes. A single core insert, it provides two cards, uh, one a single Jetpack, uh, four and a half inches wide by about 11 inches long, shorter in some cases. There's also a dual core jet pack that's four inches wide by nine and a quarter inches long. Jet packs are also available on eight and a half by 11 inch sheets for oversized cards. Both single core and dual core jet packs are always loaded into the printer lengthwise as you would an envelope. Slip the jet pack in the top of the printer, adjust the paper guide until it's snug but doesn't bind the jet pack. It should be able to easily slide up and down. Insert oversized jet packs as you would plain paper. They're eight and a half by 11, just adjust the guide. Still, it's snug, but doesn't bind. When inserting a jet pack, if you adjust the paper guide so that it's too tight and the jet pack won't slide down, that could cause jamming problems. You want to make sure that the guide is tight enough that the jet pack doesn't move from side to side, but can easily fall into the printer with no binding. The most common complaints when printing jet packs are my colors don't look right, the, they're not sharp or bright, or they jam in the printer. If your photos don't look as good as they should, or you have streaking or poor color, the first thing to check is to make sure that you have the driver set correctly. Always use the plain paper setting for printing jet packs. The resolution should be either photo or best photo for the best results. If you've selected plain paper and photo resolution, the next thing to check is to be sure that your nozzles aren't clogged. HF printers do have a habit of clogging nozzles if not used regularly. Most printers that I'm familiar with have maintenance uh, procedures inside the driver that allow you to print a test pattern to see if the heads are clogged and then will allow you to clean them if they are. What you're looking at is a test pattern printed by my Epson printer that hadn't been used in probably three months. You'll notice that the bottom pattern, that's the one I printed first, shows a lot of clogging uh, in the black section Notice this top line is gone, the bottom of the black is gone. That's going to cause streaking in black text and in photos where it uses black. Parts of the color are gone, but that's more difficult to be picked up by the camera. After I ran the cleaning routine, look at the top printout, and you'll notice that all the black is now filled in where it belongs, both the top and the bottom. So a head cleaning corrected that problem. Um, what uh, that also does is to use up ink. So don't over clean the heads. Never clean them when you don't need to. It does use up ink and you'll print less cards. This is an example of head clogging. Notice the photo at the bottom. Part of the black hair is streaked. Looks like white streaks. After the head cleaning, this is the same photo printed out. Notice the color is much more uniform, a lot better. Next we'll talk about what to do if your jet pack jams. Usually there's two ways a jet pack will jam in a printer. One is the leading edge of the jet pack hitting a guide bar inside the printer. And the second way is the print head, which sweeps back and forth, will hit the edge of either the jet pack or the card insert. First I'd like to show you what a normal jet pack should look like. This is what we call the leading edge. This is the edge that goes into the printer first. It needs to lay flat. Lay your jet packs on a tabletop, and a normal jet pack should lay flat at both edges. You shouldn't see them curled or raised. 
I'm going to simulate what a curled jetpack can look like. Simulated this by bending the leading edge up. Always store your jetpacks in the box they came with and always store them flat. Never store them on their side and never let them lay over top of anything that could put a, a crimp or a bend in them. They should stay just as flat as when you got them. Okay, this is a look inside the Epson Workforce 30 printer, one of the main printers we use for printing jetpacks. I want to point out two things that go on inside. One is a rear guide bar that the jetpack passes under, and one of them is the front guide bar that it has to go under without striking. I'm going to feed a jetpack, and you'll see how in normal printing it feeds through these guide bars. Notice it goes right under the front guide bar without, uh, without hitting. I'm going to do it again. There's the front guide bar. Simulated a bad jetpack by bending the leading head up. Now watch this bottom guide bar and watch what happens when the jetpack tries to go under it. Okay, did you see? It went on top of it. Actually, the card bent. I'm going to show it to you again. Put the camera forward so, so you can get a better view of the front guide bar. Watch what happens when this jetpack tries to go under it. Okay, did you see it feed on top? That would cause a jam. If that would happen, take your stack of jetpacks, maybe 40 of them, and take that leading edge and bend it down. Be sure that you don't break the card out, just a little gentle bend. You either want it straight or very slightly bent down, but you never want it bent up. Put your jetpacks back in the printer and it should print and feed normally. The second way a jetpack can jam is by the printhead striking it as it sweeps back and forth. Watch this simulation. Watch a normal jetpack print. And notice it comes in. The printhead starts to sweep over it. It's not striking any of the edges. The card insert is firmly in the jetpack carrier. It goes underneath the front guide bar. And that's normal trouble-free printing. The die-cut insert of a jetpack should be held in place by little nicks about every one quarter to every half inch. No wedges should be raised above or below the surface of the carrier around the jetpack. I'm going to simulate a jam by having this insert partially torn and then even bending it a little bit so that edges are sticking up. Now, it's very important when you handle jetpacks that you don't stretch or pull them because you can cause the insert to tear out. Now watch this print. I've tried to simulate a jam by the card insert coming out of the carrier. I think I did pretty well. Notice what's happening. The printhead is striking the edge of the insert. To clear the jam, first unplug your printer so that the printhead won't unexpectedly move. Try to get out as much of the jetpack as you can by gently pulling it. Top. Try to pull it backwards, but very gently. There you go. Well, that about wraps up this video. To learn more about jetpack printing and other Identicard products, please contact your Identicard representative. Call us at 1-800-233-0298 or visit us on the web at www.identicard.com. From the whole Identicard team, thanks for watching.